Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining. I noticed the subscriptions are increasing daily. And thank you. I'm very happy for that. Yay. Uh, didn't think that I would even get past one video. But we're here and I'm actually having fun. I'm having lots of fun and I hope that you're enjoying the videos too. Today we're going to be going to Banana Island. And Banana Island is kind of like a hidden gem, I would say. It, it's a very rustic campsite that I like. I'm, I'm impressed that I liked it because I've never been one for camping, even though I love the outdoors, but I've never really taken to the camping as aspect of it, you know. But it's nice. And you'll see why. But before we get to Banana Island, you know, I had to make a few stops. One of the things that I usually do before I travel is to make contact with the local midwives and the hospitals in the area, you know, just to network. So I had two, two interviews, two tours scheduled on the days that we were supposed to have been free. But as you know, once I got to Sierra Leone, things had schedule had changed a little bit, which worked out in my favor because as you know, I got there late. So the day that I had scheduled for the interviews and for the tour of the birthing center, as well as the hospitals ended up being the same day that we we're supposed to go to Banana Island. Yeah. But this is why I love BSL. They had arranged for me to get my own car so I could still go on the tours. And that car would take me later on to the boat in order to sail over to Banana Island. My first stop was at the Marina House. It's one of the birthing centers within Freetown, midway free run. They do have an obstetrician on staff as well as on call. And they come with their own OR just in case there are any obstetric emergencies. They're good to go. I was able to get a complete tour of the birthing center, speak with the gynecologist as well as other staff members that were there. I later went on to the hospital in Waterloo and also got a tour and to interview the staff members there as well. And one of the other free days that we had, I went to the Aberdeen Women's Health Center. So if you guys want to see that more in details, just let me know. I'll do a separate video on those visits. We drove about 30 miles south of Freetown and ended up in Kent. And Kent is one of those places that's well known for its fishing and its beautiful beaches. And just one look at the beaches, you know, you get a sense of how easy it is to be lost in the beauty of the place. And yeah, okay, yeah, so I want you to sit on your walk. Uh huh, why is there? They're gonna, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yes. No, that's yes. fine. I'll, I'll sit on the rock. Okay. Yeah. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I can just put it down there. Oh, right here. Thank you. Thanks. So he's bringing the boat around. That blue one's gonna come around. Okay. Your name? Lorraine. Nice to meet you, James. Jamaica. Meaning of Keep every not side. Every. Keep every not side. Not. Yeah. Keep every not. Oh, the oh, it's an acronym. Oh, okay. K E N T. Okay. Keep every not side. So what's the not? The not. Spell K N O U T. Mm -hmm. like oh, I get it. I get it. Like I get it. Yeah. And come with a slave. The slave masters give a command, say keep the knot tight. So they started to chain the slave very well. well. So that's why so they can't can. escape, right? Yeah, they can't escape. And the knot is spelled K N O U T. Mm -hmm. And Kent, we have seven slave pen in Kent. The one that you just broke mm -hmm. is the cell we are the kept the slave. The compound of the tool is mm -hmm. it's the cell where they kept the slave. Mm -hmm. But from here to Banana Island, Banana Island and sell them with different pounds. 
and Banana Island is divided into three main parts. Mm -hmm. You get the Dublin Banana Island, you get the Pitts Island, and the Snow Island. And why they name it Banana Island? The meaning Banana Island is not because of the food. The shape of the island, when you are out the ocean, you see the island shaped like banana. Mm -hmm. So that's why they give the place okay. to Banana Island. Okay, just not like how Sierra Leone they said, they look like a lion. Look like the lion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So which hospital are you in? Adga or emergency? Emergency. But I'm a midwife. So I help bring the babies in. Yeah. While I admire the beach, I also have to remember that this is a place that our ancestors who were captured by the Portuguese were hoarded onto boats, sent to Banana Island for inspection, and from there they were sent to the Americas. Kent was one of those locations where even after the slave trade was officially abolished by the British government, uh, illegal activities still took place. And those slave pens were then converted into churches by the Anglican missionaries. Now, you guys are going to have to let me know what you think about that, because there's just so much that can be said in relation to missionaries, churches, and the slave trade. The boat ride over to Banana Island was about 15-20 minutes and we had fresh coconut water waiting for us and my group members are already there so I'm just anxious to see them and catch up with them. See me party them day! Look for me party them! Welcome, 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 welcome! Right, all right. Queen Mother is home. Now yeah. we can rock now. <laughs> <laughs> now we can Welcome clean. home. <laughs> so that's our so banana is an it's island. Like the in one which gives you the view of the landscape from here. And the, actually the shape of the island shaped like banana, that's why it's called like banana island. But banana is an island which has close to plantain, which we are the richest. Um, slave masters we are living the Colcas and the Tokas. There was a fight between them that go up and the Colcas we are here, the Tokas used to plant in. So here, lots of slaves arrived here as well. So those who arrived here, they are shipped to America. All the slaves that are here, they are shipped to America. So that's how it was. That when they returned back, it was wicked. So there was a period in time when this place was like the British have to rent this one from the talkers and the Colkers while they were in Kent. So they were paying rentage to these people for them to stay here. So it was like this until 1807. This was when all of these villages were closed and slavery was abolished. So this is another one just like Mount Silent. For their fort on Kent. Well, they used to have a fort. But the fort crumbled down. So but you can see the pit here. It's not like in, but in Mount Silent. Where they were dumping them on, on board the Atlantic Ocean. Here they used to have a pit of over 20 feet deep where they were dropping them in and then put a like, big stone on top of their head. So they would be there like for days before they die. So they would move with you alive, drop in the pits, and then you'll be there for days before they die, before they pass off. So that's how it was here. And you still have the pits here? They still have the pits here, but the pit is now closed. It's like way, way close now. So if you come out, you'll have a quick walk. You might, you might stand here at Big Wharf, so you can walk and see, and then go down there for you to see how it is. So this was not like in, in Bond. Those enslaved Sierra Leonean who return. So this is the end of Banana Island. We are we are doubly Banana Island. So when you move here, it's wicked. There's another oh, beautiful yeah. village here. And it just joins the two. There's a pile of rocks for themselves. Wow. Keep piling rocks, collecting rocks all over. So wow. and then they pile them. Just see. Even if we have hard tide in the raining season, water will never go across this this rock. Over 200 years. Wow. So I think this is a spot to swim. But remember, there are some rocks here. Don't forget. We're here on Banana Island and 
is very limited electricity so you can see where it's just like on the trees there's some for the bathroom but for the most part it's just black it's just dark right so i'm here walking and it's just like walking in the country at night time you're literally walking at the behest of a flashlight or something this is the real country life i love it i love it watch there you can probably not see much but this nightlife is good so if you're coming to uh, banana island and you plan to spend the night make sure you have your flashlight and uh, you should be good just simple toiletries you know you may there's toilet paper in the bathroom you may want to make sure you bring your soap your rag your towel just pretend as if you're going camping and just you know bring the simple necessities the simple things that you think you would need if you went to camping but yeah but this is the country life this is banana island life and we're heading to dinner. There are some of the group members that are still um, taking a shower. So yeah, join us later and I'll keep you posted. Taking you inside my tent, as you can see the sleeping space. It's pretty cozy on the inside. I, I, I like it. Uh, everywhere is pretty clean, you know, from the outside looking in, you can see little stains on the tent wall, but that's expected with anything that's exposed to the elements, the water, the dirt, but it's pretty clean. There are no insects on the inside, nothing that would, you know, be an issue for me. Um, I did bring my flashlight and I do have a little uh, lamp that I brought because I did watch a few youtube videos before and saw where this would be highly needed it didn't have a hook though so i had to you know make shift um a little hook out of the stem of the coconut that i had and tied it on to the pole that's there but it worked and i had light and it was fine just outside the tent you see these beautiful flowers that if you're from the caribbean you know you definitely recognize these and you see it in everybody's yard. But you can also hear the water, hear the Atlantic Ocean. And this is just right outside the tent door. By this time, a lot more lights had come on so I could see a lot more. You know, in addition, I did have the flashlight, as I said. So that wouldn't have been an issue either way. But just standing there under the moonlight, just taking in here in the nightlight. It's just amazing feeling the cool breeze, you know, looking at the reflection of the moon over the water and see that glistening glow. Uh, you, you guys definitely have to experience this. This is amazing. Ever in Sierra Leone, definitely come to Banana Island. It is a paradise. It's just so amazing looking around and seeing all this beauty waking up on the continent, waking up on the motherland, waking up to the rising sun, you know, as Bob Marley would say. It, this is this is just amazing. You know, I'm looking around and I'm seeing other tents just a short distance away. And there's even a space where I see them constructing and expanding this um, tourism sector. And just to think how many atrocities took place in this very location and how that has been turned around into something positive, something empowering for the locals, something that they can earn money from as opposed to being the source of money for others. This is just very empowering and I love it here. So the bathroom facilities, in my opinion, is pretty decent, you know, considering where we were. Um, it was an outdoor camp-like setting, so I was comfortable with the facilities. It was definitely clean. I did see workers going in after each guest to sanitize the place where the next person went in. So that I appreciated. Uh, you definitely probably want to bring um, some shower slippers just so as not to be walking on the ground. Uh, also your washcloth and soap.
Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, oh my gosh. I slept amazing. That's good. Amazing. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. Morning. You sleep fine? Yeah. Very fine. Very fine. So the, the water now you with you, eh? Huh? No, it put me to bed. Okay. Oi. So what do you want for? Do you yeah. need coffee or tea? Tea. Yeah. It's milk? Yes, please. So as Queen Mother, I'll be sitting on my ceremonial stool. Do that. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to take a few minutes just to reflect and to internalize all that I've experienced so far, just to consider where I actually was, the history of the place that I'm actually standing now. How is this experience going to impact my life moving forward? How is it going to impact the people around me? How is it going to empower and change my mindset you know this isn't just about getting a passport for me this is a lot more this is returning home and it's not by chance that people like malcolm x and so many others visited the continent at the height of their career if you had the chance would you come this house has been here for over 200 years so as you are coming along we are having a tour of quick tour of the island the house you are seeing here is a wooden house which we call Bud Oz. So when slaves were working in different rice and sugar plantations, they saw this type of houses, of wooden houses in the southern part of America. And I keep saying, if you go to French squares, another area in America, you could see wooden houses like this. So when they return, the same lime line, rest shell and stone, which was used to build Frabe College and in Kent, the church, was used to build the pavement, which was the basement. The reason because in Sierra Leone during the rainy season, we have lots of rain, is to protect the wood for them not to get easily like washed away. So they built this house like this, and this was one of the houses that was built by the slaves when they returned back to Sierra Leone when it was abolished in 1807. And till date, people are still living inside of this house, still mm -hmm. standing here at, at Anana Island. So this is where they return slaves. We are we are like settled after the abolition of the slave trade and they return back home. Once the holding point become a dwelling place when they return back home. So different churches we are built here. You have the Portuguese church, which was built by the Portuguese in 1881, and then you have the slave fort at the back. If you want to walk quickly. Let's just see this time for you to see the church quickly and the well the same well. well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Watch the breadfruit tree, then, man. Yo, who want the breadfruit? Right. Did she get it? Nadia, you got breadfruit? No. The trees are here, but me not see nothing upon them. Are they seasonal? Yeah. Got it. Must be the summer months. Yeah. yeah. So the way you are seeing, they are fetching the water. It's the same like the one you saw in Kent, which was dug by slaves. Then there is air. And it has been here since 1814. So this is the Portuguese lamppost. You can see them all over. This was like when the slaves are coming to fetch water, it gives light here because we are also coming during the night to fetch water. This water during the Civil War, those Sierra Leoneans who invade the Civil War in Freetown and around to this place, this well was serving them as well. So this well has been here for over ages and it's still serving this entire community. So this was the well dug by the slaves whilst we are here and after the abolition of the slave trade. So if you walk this way, you could see the Portuguese church. Oh, my dad's name, my grandfather's name is Adolphus. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. Morning, Kusheo. Thank you, thank you.
The body fine. Churches around, ready to have all these black people in one place so they could communicate to them. So that was the period when churches were built. So standing here is the oldest church on the island. This is the Methodist church, and the bell that is here, that was the bell that was on board the slave boats which the slaves arrived with, which they are using to give them water or to feed them. So when they return back, they hand the bell over there, ringing the bell whenever they want to come to church. That's the bell still hanging there. This is the first church built in Banana Island in 1881. So this is the Portuguese church that was built. So it used to have about 300 people. And this is your new thing, the Porto was was just over here. And now those who are going into the fort to walk at the back of here by then this was not a structure this was built for like a school so they walk at the back and those who did not survive they start dragging them from here this way but if you are going in there they will drag them and then dump them in the pit and they have a stone they have to throw on top of your head for you to be there and then probably for days before you pass off so you walk to the chain so remember we said that the captured were taken from Kent to Banana Island for inspection. So those who did not meet inspection, those who would not have been able to make the journey into the Americas, those who were injured or otherwise, you know, lame, they would have been dragged to through the woods as we're following the path here. And there's an method to the madness like I keep going standing behind the group and watching them as they walk ahead because I'm trying to envision or people walking along these paths to their deathbeds or to the ship chained and shackled and I'm trying to envision what that might have looked like or might have felt like and you know definitely not good images this was a two-story fort that was here. So when the slaves after being separated, when they walk in here, they have to put them underneath here. They were staying on top. Just like in Bones Island. They are down and they were staying top. So while the slaves are in here, probably this was built like for 500 slaves. But here you could have seven or 1,000 slaves waiting. And as you could hear the sound of the ocean, or the Atlantic Ocean, this was why the amazing grace was done within this area by this guy called Newton. So while this slave are here waiting for them to be shipped, chained, shackled, tortured, and then while they are here, if a um, vessel is here to buy, when they arrive this way, here it's more different because they have more rocks as well. The vessels are staying out and they are coming with a smaller boat. So take the slaves. But those who are here, because of the impact or like how congested they were, men and women chained, and they were, some are falling ill. So if you fall ill, they will drag you this way. They have to drag you with your chain. They will drag you to this point. So those who are here, if you can see that there are some stones, they will not drag you here at the path, but they will drag you this way. You will be alive, they will be dragging you, or if you are dead, they will be dragging you and then they will take you down here. So this morning, you are standing at the gravesite of our forefathers who were treated by some slave stealers. Some people who think black people, we are animals. We have been to different places where we have seen grave sites of those who enslave us. But here is a pit of over four, five thousand black people, Sierraleans, whom we are dumped on board these pits. So if you fall ill or if you, you like you died while you are here, dragging your body, they will dump you inside of these pits. 
or if you are half dead, if you see this stone here, they will collect one of these stones after they have dumped you in here and throw the stone on top of your head. Imagine how inhuman you have to treat your fellow human being in this aspect in their own land of birth. This was how our people we are treated here. So this pit here, if an exemption is done here, they could find over thousands of skulls of black slaves who never made the journey to the western parts of the world or the southern parts of the world. This was their own deathbed. Imagine having this piece of stone, the weight of this, and then just throw it on board where they are jam packed. And this hole was over 20 feet deep. So meaning millions, thousands of them are in here, which was their deathbed. So this was how there are cannons over there as well. But the path is not clear. So this was the ending. This is the ending, not like in other places. They will only dump them in the Atlantic Ocean while they are coming from Kent. But as soon as they arrive here, this was their deathbed. So this is how. So if you see that's already planted flower here. So we are waiting for us to do some exhuming here. So we could do, try to bury our people in a more better way. So this is where their own journey ends. Those who are not charcoal or chilling out of the Atlantic Ocean. So in that light, we just walk down to the wall for you to see the firing point.